this could be us. So back to what I was saying. This could be us. Tips and tricks in Sunken Land. First off, pull out your axe and adjust your sensitivity to whatever you want it to be. I find close to eight to be perfect. But this also depends per person and DPI settings. Number two, take that axe and go chop down any one of these trees. One thing I would note, do not build on this island. You're gonna find a bunch of other islands that'll be more helpful to you in the future and keep you a lot more protected. You can grab mushrooms if you want to. But that doesn't really help you too much. There should be a few strawberry bushes that you're going to want to pick up on this first island. After you have a good amount of supplies, your first thing you're going to want to do is go to building, go to boats, and we're going to try to get the paddle boat. You can pin this by clicking the pin tab. If you wish to remove the pin, hit tab, go back to the pin, and remove. So it seems like we need this metal looking thing and some weird looking motor. Hovering over it will tell you what it's called. So we need 15 scrap metal and 6 components. First, you can swim underwater. Cars tend to give more components and scrap metal. You'll get, you'll get at least one component from every car you harvest leaves us with harvesting for five more cars. You can create extra space by putting items that won't normally stack in your hotbar. You want to keep your seeds for replanting. The first goal is to make a boat though, so let's focus on that. Now that you have all supplies and you're ready to build a paddle boat, let's begin building. You want to be close to the water so you can see the green. Pretty obvious, I know. All boats and planes or helicopters on this game are able to access the chest in the back to store all your recently grabbed resources. I would Before finding a place to live, you want to come here to this place as the trader. It has a big green open sign and it's right across from your starting island. Trading outpost. Has a bunch of resources in it and things that you will need eventually down the line. refrigerator, a cabinet for wood that you can scavenge use. And if you want to be that guy, take everything, leave one item, so when you load back in, food will be restocked. Same with all these crates. You can actually take all items except one. And the crate won't disappear. So that falls into the same tip. Make sure you never destroy the crates fully so your loot will never run out. At the trader, you'll be able to sell valuables 
like this for coins if you have no other use. But what I like to do is just do it for the items that I want. So right now, we're not really in need of any of this. But a really nice place that I highly recommend would be on top of pillars like that or on top of anything high to help you later when you start getting raided. So my favorite spot would be this building right here. Right here is the coordinates for it. And here it is from the Castaway Island. Now with the supplies that you just picked up, you won't need to be able to use that to get on top of the building. I don't like to choose this one because it's too low. But this one is just about the right height. So I'm going to park my boat right here. Go to building. Place your first foundation. I like to place it a little bit away. You can easily go up by placing a pillar in the build tab and then a wood floor. You'll need to use a staircase or a ladder to get up. And you repeat this process by putting it on the corner another ceiling and then your ladder or you can do staircase staircases have been recently added since this new update there's no snap on grid but they work pretty well don't worry if you run out of resources, there will be plenty down here. So, before we go down to do anything, the first thing you should do, if you have enough resources, I would highly recommend Placing a foundation as straight as you can get it. Once you have your foundation placed up top, I highly suggest placing a bed on it. Because when nighttime comes, you're going to want to sleep and it's very hard to see anything and you're going to want a respawn point now after waking up you're going to want to drink and eat because your food and water will be exhausted now we're ready to go and explore if you have enough wood still remaining Make sure you make a chest beside your bed. Store all your extra supplies. Our next goal will be to obtain diving fins. and to expand our foundations. So we will also be making a research table. 
Diving fins are very important to start and hurry up and get at the beginning of the game to help you really just get around underwater. The components that we're going to need for diving fins will be Merlin fish skin and rope. You can go to the rope category down here for simple crafting. It takes three craw 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 craw. It takes three cloth to make one rope. Seems like we don't have enough. We'll have to get this all separately, I guess. So first for the Merlin. This can often be a very painful thing to do. But they always come back around. After killing those Merlin, there's more Merlin back here that we're able to kill. These ones are a little bit deeper, but we only need three. Now once back at the house, we can go ahead and uh, put all the supplies that we're not going to be currently using back and just keep the good things. Now, let's craft two different ropes. Go into the tool, craft flippers. With flippers, you will be able to swim a lot quicker underwater and be able to reach the bottoms with ease. and have still enough oxygen to get back up after looting a few items. This will make it 10 times easier living in a location where you have to swim deep and there's not a lot near you. So, let's go ahead and expand our foundation. Not too much though, because we still have to build the research table. After you have your flippers in the research table, we are going to want to learn cross bolts and crossbow. These two items are very, very helpful. So let's get that going. We have enough items already to make the cross bolts. This will not make it, but this will research it. After we have the crossbow bow, we can now go to our building, or our inventory, tools, or weapons, and we can make crossbows there, bolts there. But now we gotta get one more rope. Luckily, we picked up enough on the way. But this isn't going to make it. The crossbow will be very helpful for your beginning of the raids. Let's go get us some more cloth. And let's craft some bolts.
now that we have the supplies for the crossbow, boat, bowl, boat, cro crossbow, go ahead and craft it and craft us some bolts. Always drag your bolts down here at the bottom so they take up less space and you can always see how many you have. Before we go to our first raid, we're going to want 16 wood and 3 cloth. Once you have your 16 wood and 3 cloth, let's head to our first island. I would recommend you highly start on this island here, but for me, I'm going to go to this bridge. Yeah, this is a voiceover. I realize that I'm a complete dumbass and I fuck up my words a lot, but enjoy the video. <laughs> Once you have gotten to the location, make sure you find somewhere where they're not going to be able to shoot your boat or somewhere away from them that is just further away from where they are than you are. So for me, right here seems pretty good. But I have to place it right here. I guess I'm just going to move my boat. Now what you want to do is take your found- build a foundation out of wood. And then build you a bed. That should have been the perfect amount to get that set up. Now, you are ready. The purpose of this is so whenever you die, you can respawn on the bed. And the reason I say, make sure your crossbow and your bolts are in your hotbar, is so when respawning, both of the items are still here. Another raid tip is every single time that you're done raiding, make sure that you break your bed, either by hitting it with an axe, shooting it with a crossbow, or you can pick it up with packing box. Or you can make yourself a repair hammer and destroy it that way as well. That's another really simple way to be able to do that. Now that we're done with the raid, and we have all of our loot that we could possibly hold, it's time to head home. Next thing that I would do after your first raid is craft a sack. You should have plenty enough cloth and plenty enough rope to be able to make a nice little sack to be able to hold more items. This just needs a lot of this. A lot of cloth. This will definitely help you carry a lot more on the raid. Not a lot, but more than enough. <clears throat> if you're asking me, how do I have these random dr uh, diving fins? Fuck. 
Um, so there's a few items that you can actually go and learn through blueprints while searching. And these are these items. I'm going to craft this. I'm not going to craft that. <laughs> After making your bag, you want to go through the research table and learn anything that you would think would be valuable. Now for me, I'm going to do repair station, water bottle, and glass windshield bridge. So, I need 10, but I'm going to pull out two stacks because everything else takes stuff. Pull out my glass, and a stack of my components. You most likely won't have as much as me. So I'll have to go out and do more raids. After learning those, you're not able to craft them. Another tip is to definitely build a torch at nighttime because it gets pretty damn cold and you will start to freeze. Next will be defending tips. So I'm going to teach you how to set up your base properly so you don't have to defend too awfully hard. Um, <clears throat> so the best tip I can possibly give would be to build like this on top of a building. Then you won't have to worry about, about a bunch of people coming in and destroying your entire base and it's just not a fun time. Yes, this may not be the most beautiful location, but this will help you from all your items being destroyed because raids do get very bad and very hard. So when they start raiding you, you need to be ready. So what I'm actually going to do is expand my foundation all the way around this little spot and have most of my items close around that. Just so when I end up do getting raided, I will be perfectly fine. small tip there will be cotton plants on different islands and that is another way of making rope or another way of making cloth definitely keep those seeds so um i completely didn't realize that i wasn't recording but um we're gonna make traps so research the traps now after getting all your supplies that you're going to need Let's go ahead and learn the two objects. For me, I'm going to go ahead and craft myself one of those axes, pickaxes, because I just want to prepare for when I finally unlock that stuff. Now with the newly built traps that we can now make, it'll be right down here in the fence section. And you will see the trap that goes onto walls and the spike trap that will snap on the here. These are really good for if you're building around the water like this, so right here. You can actually build this around your items. Let's go get some metal. Now that we have our supplies, let's go and slap down a wall. Because I was gonna put on the other spot, it just wasn't right. 
And we're going to set our trap right here. Now, to be completely honest, I think if they climb up here, the trap will hit them. Or anywhere close to this, it'll fall down and crush them. If you build on land, these are what you want. But if you build in the water, you're going to want to put these. You can still jump over it if you have a boat beside it, which is what I'm going to do. It just makes it a lot easier. Next tip is I would definitely recommend building yourself a planter. These are absolutely necessary. You're going to need a bunch of cloth and wood. The first thing I would recommend planting in these would absolutely be trees. Another tip is to make sure you have them if you have a foundation that goes off the ledge like this, one foundation away because that's their max spread distance of fallen. And now I want to have two nice little trees growing. If you get you cotton plants, that's going to be a nice easy way to be able to get fiber. Not fiber. Cloth. But let's go ahead and sleep. Now it's getting daytime. I'm going to grab all of my valuable sellable things. I'm going to head to the trader. Are you interested in some goods? A quick tip is to not trade all your stuff in for coins. Because when you have coins, the value of the coin is worth less going back then it would be worth one of these. So as you can see, one diamond ring is 100 and something value. So I can have <coughs> one blueprint two stacks, so one blueprint and 22 scrap for one diamond ring. And the value of my coin not even enough. Let's go ahead reset I can only get seven and six doesn't even allow me to get half of what I can get. So when you offer your sellables, you just want to be able to get anything that you want right away instead of actually doing it for coins. So I'm going to stock up on everything that I can. I also recommend building a purifier. Purifiers are really helpful to get water when you need some. I also definitely recommend building a grill because it's pretty helpful. I didn't uh, record doing this part, but it's a voiceover again. <laughs> After you have a grill and a water purifier, you're going to want to get a sea bucket. 
to fill that up. Once you have the sea bucket, you go into the water, press F to fill it, yeah, press F to <laughs> fill it, bring it back over here, and put one in. Now you will need to do this every single time, and you have to have wood inside of it to be able to obviously, you know, get yourself some monsters. After a while, the water will eventually be able to pour into here. And with our item that we learned earlier, we will be able to make a glass bottle. With the glass bottle, we can actually take the seawater and it will automatically fill up our glass bottle. So now when you're out and about and you need water, you will always have that with you. And that was tips and tricks for sunken land. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys want any more videos similar to this, let me know in the comments. Smash that like button. Share it with your friends if you need, you know, to show them a little bit of help and stuff like that. Um, I, if there's any other kind of video suggestions that you guys have, definitely also leave that in the comments. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out. This could be us. So back to what I was saying.